Right now, it's time to uh, look at the papers and see what the headlines are. We're going to take some of the national dailies, not all of them, so you have the opportunity to uh, read others up when you uh, get that opportunity. Um, we're, we'll be looking at the Punch, the Daily Trust, and so many other uh, newspapers. But our guest this morning is Barrister Justice C. Uhwegbu, human rights lawyer and 2019 presidential candidate of NAC party. Good morning and welcome to the program, Barrister. Good morning. It's my pleasure once more. Okay. Um, let me begin what, I what is not uh, like we say on the streets um, now. <laughs> okay. Uh, 2019, you were a presidential candidate of NAC party. Uh, where, where... Sorry? Sorry? Presidential candidate. Presidential candidate. Okay, vice presidential right. candidate. Okay, you had a dream for Nigeria. How is that working out? Even though you are not at the helm of affairs, but how is that dream, your dream for Nigeria, working out right now? Well, truly speaking, is actually not working out. That's just the truth. But uh, I am still hopeful that um, one way or the other, provided there is life, uh, that dream must come to one day. There's no joke about it. Mm. Because one thing is to have a dream, another thing is to focus on that dream, and another thing is to pursue that dream. Mm. And by the special grace of God, it will work out, and it will work out for the good of every Nigerian. Amen to that. Amen. So let's begin with uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. The Punch newspaper leads with the um, caption, Federal government writes governors as agency predicts flooding in three states. Federal government, those, the writers are, Federal government agency leads local governments in Akwaibom, Lagos, Adamawa, Ogun, Benway, 26 others as high flood risk areas. Benway demolishes uh, riverside buildings. Lagos directs residents to relocate. Sokoto, Edo, others begin campaigns. Uh, so let me get your comments on that. Well, the truth is that, um, yes, there is another, or we are entering another rainy season period. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, once it comes like this, there will be issues of flooding and all the rest. But um, I think one of the problems we had earlier before now is uh, that if the government has planned so much for future, and that is why you need to, as a government, you need to always forecast you know, the future. Because you discover that most of the buildings and most of the things that we are done, we are actually built in a drainage way and where the water should also flow easily to the sea or to the river. But unfortunately, because of the lapses and the insensitivity of the government, at times, all these things are, are blocked. And now, we are not seeing the impact of some of these things. And secondly, the government should also always prepare. Because in other countries where there is always flood, it's not only in Nigeria that there is flooding. It's not only saying uh, the, the federal government warning states about flooding. What proactive action or measure is the government actually taking in order to make sure that you know they prepare for this flooding? So that in fact you don't need to wait until it happens. You need to begin to work so that if actually it comes, because it's a, it always comes as a natural disaster you will not be cushioned the effect of those things so that it won't be much. Mm. I, I don't know what they, they, they can do because uh, at some point, was it last year or so, when they said the, the dam in Cameroon was going to release water, every time that happens, uh, flooding happens in a lot of places and the government just tells the people, leave where you are, go and look for refuge somewhere else. And, so I, I don't know what as a government they could do or they could have done to make sure that when it comes, because they say from April to November, that's a very long time uh, for, for fl to be expecting flood and trying to do anything about it. What do you think they could have done? No, for me, the government knows what to do. That is why it's a government. That is why it's a government. You are in the hem of a thing. You are to, you know, to administer for people to be here for, for the interest of the people and others. And if you remember, in the wisdom of the Constitution, the Constitution says that the main aim of government is for the welfare and security of the people. So this one now falls under the welfare of the people. So it's not enough saying they should relocate. Where are they located to? 
If you feel that location is the best option, you know, to come that inside, then provide the location exercise, provide amenities and all the rest so that they can move. Build local houses. In fact, build, build, build houses so that they can relocate for that mean time. And then look for a lasting solution. Now, for example, this thing has been seen, it has been forecast. What is the government doing? It's not just seeing it and forecasting it. There are agencies responsible for this. What are the agencies doing? What recommendations are they making? So the government knows what to do. It's not a matter of what are they going to do. They know what to do. Only that they forgot, they, they, they refuse to do the need for. Mm. Okay, uh, let me move to another issue. Uh, in the uh, oil sector, uh, marketers excited as Dangote lowers diesel to 1,000 naira per litre. Does it excite you as well? Because um, we have well, seen, I, we've seen where I, 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 petrol and all that, and people are even saying that he should sell for 550 naira. I, I don't know. Do, does it excite you at all? If you ask, I don't think there's any right thing in Nigeria that this issue of our petroleum product should excite. The reason being that this is a country that produces crude. We're not talking about diesel, about uh, PMOS, about this. Or we, we produce this food. God has given it to us as a natural resources. And this thing flows like river on daily basis. So, in fact, Nigeria is, is supposed to be one of the countries that should be enjoying this natural resources. The problem we have, we're talking about Dangote today. Dangote is a private individual. Yes, he's in business. The problem we have is that what has happened to our refineries? Before now, we are having all these problems. If you remember in the early 80s, it wasn't like that. I, I remember when a, 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 a liter of, uh, of fuel uh, uh, was sold for 11 naira per liter. So what are we saying? Mm. I don't think that anybody should be impressed. Okay, but the conditions in those uh, days where it was sold for 11 naira may not be the same as now. But uh, so some uh, some people might argue that even the international market uh, price for the for oil has changed and all that. So it also will need to affect uh, our oil. No, is it material? Even in the oil, in the international market, the price even if the price changes and goes. I think we are producing crude. If we, if we are selling crude for our local consumption, if people Nigeria to enjoy it. The problem we have here, we produce this crude, we sell it outside, it is refined here, and goes back here and be sold to us again. I mean, what a disaster. It is material whether the price is. In fact, the higher the price here, Nigeria should be making money. Hmm. But it is not supposed to affect Nigeria. Okay. Um there is this headline also on the plunge a 30 billion dollars loss federal government may revoke unused oil well licenses uh, it's just now we're seeing that uh, there are some oil wells that are unused uh, and i wonder why you would get an oil well and not use it and federal government may revoke this because of the losses that they incur uh, do you think that will be an improvement on uh, there will be an improvement on the production of oil that we have in Nigeria and subsequently other things that are tied to the oil production. Do you think revoking is the right step to take? Well, the truth is this. Even if you revoke them, who are you are going to allocate them to? You see, the major problem we have in Nigeria is this issue of impunity. And that is what has been cleaned us. And it will continue until we tell ourselves the truth. And like I keep on saying, the major problem in this country is lack of sincerity of purpose. That's just the truth. Now, you now ask yourself, who are these people that have allocation for you? Well, they are all, all the higher mighty in the society, in the government, and all the way. So, whether they use it or not, it does not concern them. For them, they have it. So, if the government can actually be proactive to revoke those licenses, and it's not only revoking them or collecting them, it's are you going to make proper use of them? Or this or you were? That is the problem. Secondly, for me, for me, I do not even see the reason why an individual should own an oil well in this country. Because this is this, this is a natural resources for all Nigerians. And remember, like I keep on saying, and I'll keep on saying it, and I'll continue saying it, that every Nigerian, we are all stakeholders in this country. 
So why would few individuals be meant to own all you well? Mm. All right, let's move to the Guardian newspaper. I'm taking a smaller headline there uh, because it's really concerning. Security, anything that has to do with security. Reps Cockers give Tinubu ultimatum to end insecurity. That's on page three of uh, uh, the Guardian newspaper. So they have given the president an ultimatum to end insecurity. Um, how feasible uh, how feasible do you think this is and what are the parameters or what are the measures that need to be put in place if this is to work well uh, like you said earlier i wish i was uh i succeeded in 2019. for me by now this this is the quality issue that have been a thing of the past because some of us we know the technical how know how of what to do uh it, it, it takes me back to my earlier statement and what is that statement, lack of inspiration of purpose? You see, it's not enough coming to the pages of newspaper every time, going to television, organizing symposiums and all the rest, going to National Assembly saying that's going to end insecurity. My brother, let's be realistic to ourselves in this country. It, it is not possible because the, the government is not ready to do the need for These people that are saying these things, how many of the senators? How many of the House of Red members without security? Without, when I mean security, I mean volume of military men, policemen, and others that can easily or comfortably or conveniently travel to their various hometowns without being attacked. It's not possible. So they say in Abu Dhabi, uh, the National Assembly or anywhere, and the coffin and others, but they know what to do. And for me, it's very simple. Because when you have a security apparatus that is confined and that is dedicated to doing their job, all these things will stop. But the problem we have is that we are playing politics with everything. Unfortunately, we are still playing politics with security. How do you mean we are still playing politics with security? Yes, everything, everything today has done to be politics. Because uh, something will happen, there will be blame games. These people will be blaming this sector, or agency will be blaming this one, this agency will be blaming this, this agency will be blaming this. And they are talking about policies. It's not enough. Like, look at what they are saying. They are going to end insecurity. How long have they been in power now? How long have they been in government? Do you need to tell us? You don't need to tell us. In fact, let me tell you the truth. A good security expert doesn't even need to tell people your security tactics in order to secure your territory. You don't come out every time on the newspaper or the media to start saying these things. You're helping it. You're only trying to let it be active. You're doing anything. That's why I say we are playing politics with everything. These things are unnecessary. As far as I'm concerned, mm. do the needful. Mm. Okay, so uh, now uh, some politics now. Uh, PDP governors at Tiku Wiki comes intensify positions at Make or Ma Neck. My, my, my confusion is that a lot of people have been removed from their parties. A lot of people have been suspended from their parties or expelled from their parties because of what they call anti-party, because of some very, very um, insignificant, if you ask me, the things that uh, they may have done or said. Uh, now, someone like uh, Wiki, former governor of River State and now minister of the Federal Capital Territory, is still in PDP and even gunning for very, very high positions. Uh, he still has a camp in PDP and all that. What are the, the legal intricacies? What are the legal complexities that uh, make it difficult to remove or expel or suspend someone like Wiki? Because we've seen a lot of things forming gangs, if you ask me, against the party and doing so many other things. And right now he's in government in an opposition party or a different party. So what are the legal implications of removing someone of, let's say, Wiki's standing? Because we've seen governors being suspended, governors being uh, sanctioned and all that, but Wiki is still enduring in PDP. So what's going on? <laughs> well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, there, I, there's no law in the first place. There's no law that says 
Because if you are a member of a particular political party, you cannot serve in a government that is formed by another political party. There is no law to that effect. Mm. And uh, if we actually tell ourselves the truth, as Nigerians and as human beings collectively, for example, uh, in 2019, I was invited to the national candidate that we did not come into power does not mean I cannot serve in any other government. Because what is paramount here is that thing you want to do, can you come up and contribute your own quota to the, to, the, to the society? Remember, the problem we have in Nigeria is that we play more, poly, more uh, 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 to the party policies than playing policies the way it should be. If you become the president, you are the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Forget about the party you came from. Yes, party is a platform. But you have become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. At that point, you are not supposed to be talking about party. We can now, is the minister of FCT. FCT comprises both PDP members, APC members, and other political parties. So you're not answering the minister for APC or PDP. So I don't see anything wrong in that, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, but if you now come to political parties, they have their own constitution that deals with internal, you know, policies or internal democracy within themselves. And I'm aware also that they always have this issue of anti-party activities and all the rest. I don't see somebody who has been given an appointment a, a, to serve in a government. I don't see it as an anti-party activity, no. For me, I don't see it that way. There are so many things that can constitute an anti-party activity. Like, for example, election is being conducted and you are in, in PDP, you are now working for a, a, APC openly, or you are making some derogatory statements against your party to favor... Yes, but we saw that in the, in the presidential election. Wiki was very vocal about it. The governorship will go to PDP, but the presidential, he was gunning for the APC. How much anti-party can someone be? And then he was the spearhead when there, were, where there was a G5 that was formed against his own party and all that. They worked against his party. So what other anti-party activities do we need to see? Uh, I'm talking about this because there are people who have been suspended for less crimes, uh, as it were. So what is so difficult in his suspension. Yes, he could be a minister because uh, no, no party, uh, it is not a one-party thing, as you said. But other things that have happened before now, and we keep asking, why is he not suspended? Why is he not sanctioned? What makes him greater than a party that is like the biggest opposition party right now? We just want to see if there is a law or there are some legal implications that if he's removed, uh, the party might crash or something, or he might take them to court. No, no, no. Normally, if he's removed, he might decide to take them to court. But at the end of the day, taking the party to court, are you going to win the matter? It's either here nor there. But the truth is this. The party itself is supreme. Somehow, the constitution is supreme over its members and others. So, if the party decides not to suspend him or not to initiate any proceedings against me, that is their business. But as far as I'm concerned, no one person is bigger than an association, especially because the party, a political party is an association registered, especially when that association is registered and has a constitution. So for, for the party, I don't know why they may have chosen to do that line or nothing. I don't think that he's bigger than the party or anything. But if they are going to suspend him or do any, take any action on the part or simply for the fact that he was appointed a minister, no, that one will not succeed. But there are other uh, reasons where they can actually lay their hands to suspend him, provided they have their facts and figures. So, as far as I'm concerned, nobody is. In fact, the court has said this several and has interpreted it in so many decided cases that the, the party and its internal affairs does not concern anybody. The worst you can do, if you don't like that political party, you move to another political party. Mm, interesting. Because in River State right now, his loyalists are all in APC and he's supporting them and all that. So I was just, now we have like two governments in the River State because of that. And he's still waxing strong. Right now, he is one of the contenders for to get all the, 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 the juicy positions um, 
what we're seeing on the papers is Atiku's camp and Wike's camp in the same PDP. And I'm just wondering, I'm not that much of a politician, so I'm asking to know, because you have been in the highest uh, rank of a political party. That's why I needed to know, and with your background in law. Now, we go to Vanguard newspaper, and the leading headline there is Food Inflation Slowing, uh, Slowing. Federal government's revenue rises. That's according to Edun, the Wale Edun, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy. Then the rider is that targets more foreign investment inflow. And then IMF raises forecast for Nigeria's economic growth to 3.3%. Now they went to the United States and said that uh, the food inflation is slowing down now and that the federal government's revenue is rising. Uh, that's the finance minister. And they are targeting uh, more investments and so many other things. But what do you think about this? The reality on ground and what they said in Washington? You see, um, the truth is that we are Nigerians and we all live in this nation. Um, most times, what you see on the pages of the newspapers and what you see on the, uh, on the media, they not, in fact, they are not following the true resemblance of what is happening in practice. Um, and I think everybody in Nigeria knows, including me, and I believe also including you there in the studio, that um, in, 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 in some, some few months now, or let me put it that way, the issue of food has become a very, very big problem in the country. And uh, unfortunately, why... Nigerians are going through this. There is rise every day in revenue generation from the federal government. Taxation is going high. So many things are going high. And all these things are to the detriment of the citizens. So it's so unfortunate. And that's why we keep on saying, or people like us keep on saying, are we now actually being, you know, in line with what the constitution provides for the welfare and security of the citizens? So at times when you see some of these things, you wonder where the government is coming from. Because for me, any government that comes in power to first of all think about the interest of the people. Get to the market today and see the cost of food items. You, 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 I, I, if you have 5,000 naira and go to the market, you can't buy anything with it. Mm. In fact, it cannot, take, it cannot provide you one square meal. Just one, one, one. Just one. I'm not talking about three times in a day, morning, afternoon, and night. Just one. 5,000 naira. So what are we talking mm. And still, any little thing you do, government takes over you. You go to bank to withdraw money, government takes over you. You do anything, government takes over you. So, and that is why these things are, these Nigerians are becoming frustrating and all the way. In fact, it is nothing that the, the, uh, our money is, is becoming something else. Go to the market today now with 50,000 naira. You cannot buy, you, can, you cannot fill, half, half of the cellophane bag will not, will not be filled. How much is, I don't know when last you went to the market. This, this, this small piece of garlic. In the market now is about three thousand five. Mm. A tuba of yam is about two thousand five. One tuba of yam. So what are we seeing? I don't want to talk about pepe, tomatoes, and all the rest. <laughs> that place is no going. And these are things that people need on daily basis. Mm. I don't want to go to beans. I don't want to go to rice. A bag of rice today that we used to buy for seven thousand five hundred eight thousand naira. It's almost 80,000. What are we saying? Hmm. If you're yes. saying almost, that means you're in a very good area because in some places it's 90,000 and I've heard some people say they have bought it for like 100,000. So I don't know. So if it is almost 80,000 in your area, buy like 10 <coughs> and keep it because uh, it might even still go higher. We, but we pray against that. Now let's take a final one. Um, Kano State anti graft Agency files fresh charges against Ganduje. Former Governor uh, uh, Ganduje uh, is in the EFCC net. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, he's the chairman 
or the national chairman of the ruling party APC. In fact, because of this uh, problem of uh, him facing accusations by EFCC, the Gandola thing, and so many other bribes allegations against him, the word uh, where he comes from, which eventually is called Gandhiji Ward as well, uh, suspended him from the party and said that he should answer to these uh, purported crimes before he can come back into the party. And these people have been now suspended again by higher body of the party, the local government. Uh, so the local government is, is not in support, the state is not in support, the national is not in support, only the ward, and now they've been branded anti-party. So where do you see this case of Ganduje even going? Well, the, uh, the truth about the matter is that, uh, personally, I think the party is doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, I wish that um, we will continue this way. Because for me, uh, once somebody has an allegation or is being threatened to hire for anything, uh, that person should be suspended from anywhere he's holding any public position until that matter is dispensing. Uh, in as much as um, the, the national concern has amended, presumed every accused person innocent until presumed guilty. But once oh, right. there is such thing, it improves on the integrity and the character of the person. And for me, I think uh, the party got it right at this point in time. We, 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 we should begin to see a change. We should begin to see a change, you know, to see how we can do things better. But my problem is not just um, EFCC arresting him or telling him to court. At the end of the day, what can they come up with? Because uh, you see, we are in a country now where people now believe that uh, there are two sets of law that is existing one for the poor and one for the rich. Uh, look at the case of Bogniski now, who was uh, taken to court and convicted for Naira mutilation. He's not the only person that has been doing that. Go to parties that uh, you see, you run government, government officials, you see the way they spread the Naira, abuse the Naira, and all I'm waiting to see one government official that EFCC will arrest. Because of that, so it's, it's, it's part of what we are saying. But we are watching. We are watching. As far as I'm concerned, uh, for me, the the APC party got it right by suspending him for the for the meantime, letting him face his trial and finish his trial. Because somebody who has a pending matter, it it, it goes to the integrity and the personality of that person, especially the case of corruption. Okay. Uh, well, this is a good place to drop it. I know there are so many other headlines, but we'd like to thank you, Barrister, for being a part of our show this morning. Thank you very much. Okay, we've been talking with Barrister Justice C. Uhwebu, human rights lawyer and 2019 presidential candidate of, or vice presidential candidate of NAC party on Off the Press. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. Stay with us.